Well, listen, it is Wednesday. I almost said Thursday. It is Wednesday, which means it's time for us to talk a little bit about Rewind. What opened this day 10 years ago and this week 20 years ago? Rewind, of course, is brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. I like to call this segment our feeling old segment because, wow, do we ever feel old when we look at these. So celebrating their 10th anniversaries this week, the classic the great, one of the greatest action films of all time, Blood Rain, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Blood Rain. Then you get what I consider to be one of the most underappreciated comedies ever made, Grandma's Boy, and of course the horror, what's kind of become a modern cult classic, Eli Roth's Hostel. Mm -hmm. Opening 20 years ago, we've got one of the better spoofs probably ever done, Don't Be a Menace to South Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood. We've got Biodome, <laughs> Dunstan Checks In, Lawnmower Man 2, Beyond Cyberspace, Eye for an Eye, and Two If By C. Christian, you look at these, these movies celebrating 10 and 20 year anniversaries, which ones stand out to you? I am furious with Ray right now. Where in the hell is Dunstan Checks In on that? Uh, on, Ray, where is Dunstan checks in? <laughs> Maybe you couldn't even find a poster for it. I remember seeing that movie. I worked at a movie theater back in the day, and Dunstan checks. He was about a orangutan who works in a hotel, so that'll tell you anything. Um, Biodome and Don't Be a Menace. Those are the ones that stand out to me. Both guilty movie pleasures. Fun. I the one scene in Don't Be a Menace when you were talking earlier about see greatest mo funny mo moments that just yeah. make you kind of cry. I remember watching that movie Don't Be a Menace and they spoofed the Boys in the Hood scene when he just when the Cuba Gooding Jr. He starts swinging and someone always starts, or, or Sean always starts swinging and then out of nowhere like all these kids start popping up. He starts knocking all the kids backwards and everybody starts getting knocked over. The, I just started crying laughing because mm -hmm. it was so ridiculous and a great spoof. Mm -hmm. And Biodome's another one. You know, Paulie Shore did have a few. We we use him as a reference every right. time we want. To make fun of somebody but i'll tell you what there are a couple movies that he did that continue to be guilty movie pleasures one is is absolutely biodome and others in sino man which oh, I, of course right, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. um eye for an eye i actually remember that movie lone man lone more man too good lord did that even do a theatrical <laughs> release I guess yes it, it did. did i unfortunately saw it oh man oh, was that brutal or oh, what? so unbelievably horrible yeah and uh, and i actually did see two if i see you and sandy <clears throat> bullock should not do a boston accent Hey, look, if you thought Lawnmower Man, the first one sucked, check out Lawnmower Man 2, because it sucks even more. That's incredible suckage. That's I like incredible the first suckage. Lawnmower Man. Yeah, I, like I, the, first I, the one thing I remember is a bunch of kids on a weird roller coaster in cyberspace. I mean, that's the one. I mean, just try to wrap your head around that. It's beyond dumb. Um, the ones that stick out to me, Hostel. You know, the, what you might say started the, the whole torture porn. Yeah. That's the first stuff. time I ever, uh, uh, the term may have been around before that, right. I don't know, but that was the first time I was introduced to the term torture porn was that. So it's, Eli almost created a subgenre within right. horror itself. Well, it, was, it was around, but more in like the, the you know, lower end horror. Right. This was the first big released film that just had a lot of torture. And it was like really hard to watch when that guy got his, you know. Achilles heel sliced and there was like some really horrifying stuff going on in the film. But I actually liked Hostel 2 better. As far as a film goes, I thought it was like really up the ante, so to speak. Uh, Grandma's Boy sticks out to me. That was all, you just I've really, never seen it. Yeah, really? oh, no, you know I what? Know. Oh my god, it's, it's really good. Long, we, I want to sit down and watch it with yeah. you. I right. seriously, let's get so, you, me, right. Mark, a couple guys watch it. Honestly, because to me, that's the one that stands out to me. Yeah, the most, it's very Grandma's funny. Boy. It's it's one of those ones that I had no interest in. Was in the theater, and I went one day because I think, I honestly, think me and my buddies went to go see something else and it was sold out. So he's checked out Grandma's Boy. It's Adam Sandler's crew mm -hmm. right. without Adam Sandler. Nick um, Schwartz and Star is in it. Is that it? Uh, he's in it, okay. but I'm trying to remember small the, part. the lead okay. guy is uh, the lead guy in it was fantastic. I can't remember his name. He's never been a lead in anything else ever again. But I'm telling you, man, that movie is so freaking funny. It I really was is. so surprised by how funny. Gra if you have not seen Grandma's Boy, trust me, go grab it. I know I would normally not recommend these like weird, you know, Sandler spinoff films, but this one is incredibly funny. In right. fact, it's all about video game making and yep. this kid gets his game stolen by this other like matrixy like the guy's just doing these weird robot sounds when he, no one's looking. The, what, Dresses I can't, like Neo. Yeah, I mean it's, it's really funny. And what was the, what was the other one from the 10th uh 
Uh, the other one. Oh, Blood Rain. Blood Rain. Oh, yes. How can you forget that Uwe Boll classic? You it's, know? it's the one that introduced most people to Uwe Boll. Right. Yeah. That's right. I mean, he's actually doing Rampage Rampage Three right now, and he said, oh, "This no. is my last film." He's declared declared you know, declared that. So my favorite thing about Blood Rain is Michael Madsen's comments of it was an abomination. I love that he called his own movie an abomination, and that Ben Kingsley just kind of slept slept walked through it. Yeah. I mean, I remember seeing it. I was like, "Why is he in this?" And it's <laughs> unbelievable. You're like, he's cashing a check, yo. Yeah. You could just see the money. Why He's like, but pretend Uwe Boll had as a history. He somehow gets some decent named actors. Like, what was that one in the name of the king? He had like uh, oh, yeah, Ray Liotta, Jason Statham, he's, like Mia yeah. Wasikowska. I think yeah. was in that. If I'm not mistaken, he single handedly he's he is the guy who you could blame the video game destruction of the movies. You look at how many bad video game movies have been so directed. Many. He directed like four or five of yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.